been called the father of modern revivalism. Charles Finney is considered by some to have had the most lasting results. Ten years after one revival in the early 19th century, 80% of the many thousands who made commitments to Christ were still faithful followers of Jesus. His salvation was no less spectacular. Prior to Finney's conversion, his sharp legal mind wrestled with God day after day. He was filled with pride. If Finney was reading the Bible when someone came into his law office, he would hide it. As the conviction of the Holy Spirit increased, he said, it seemed as if my heart grew harder and harder. I could not shed a tear. I could not pray. One day, instead of going to the office, Finney said, I turned toward the woods, feeling that I must be alone and away from all human eyes and ears so I could pour out my prayer to God. I found a place where some large trees had fallen across each other, leaving an open place between them. There I saw I could make a kind of closet. I crept into this place and knelt down for prayer. But when I attempted to pray, I found that my heart would not pray. My inward soul hung back. I began to feel deeply that it was too late. It must be that I was given up of God and that I was past hope. A great sinking discouragement came over me, and I felt almost too weak to stand upon my knees. An overwhelming sense of my wickedness in being ashamed to have a human being see me on my knees before God took such powerful possession of me that I cried at the top of my voice and exclaimed that I would not leave that place if all the men on earth and all the devils in hell surrounded me. I prayed for some time. This passage of scripture seemed to drop into my heart with a flood of light. Then shall you go and pray to me, and I will hearken unto you. Then shall you seek me and find me, when you shall search for me with all your heart. I instantly seized hold of this. I had intellectually believed the Bible before, but never had the truth been in my mind that faith was a voluntary trust instead of an intellectual state. I continued to pray and to receive and appropriate promises for a long time. I prayed till my mind became so full that before I was aware of it, I was on my feet and tripping up the ascent toward the road. Later that night, I went back to my office, and as I turned and was about to take a seat by the fire, I received a mighty baptism of the Holy Ghost without any expectation of it, without ever having the thought in my mind that there was any such thing for me as the Holy Spirit. He ascended upon me in a manner that seemed to go through me, body and soul. I could feel the impression like the wave of electricity going through and through me in waves and waves of liquid love. It seemed like the very breath of God. No words can express the wonderful love that was shed abroad in my heart. I wept aloud with joy.